since the COVID crisis, I've had two, I've had an arson and a theft and another theft. To your property? To my property. Yeah. And the arson, they burnt, they burnt my hammock and another, another two seconds of burning and the whole backyard would have been on fire. And so just on a, on a finishing point, what's the message that you have for city council, the mayor of Kingston? Well, these are your citizens and other citizens of Kingston. They're Canadian citizens. And we don't treat people that way. At least not in the Canada I know. And last time I checked, Kingston was in Canada. A few weeks ago, I traveled to Kingston, Ontario to report on what local residents are calling the Kingston hot potato. It all started when a few residents from the neighborhood of King's Court reached out to Rebel News with concerns about homelessness in this neighborhood. There have been increasing incidences of crime, drug use, and of course, the coinciding paraphernalia that comes with that. And surprisingly enough, the proposals by Kingston's town council seem to be in conflict with their municipal housing strategy to prevent concentration of non-market rate housing, which their own report states is a large contributing factor in the health of a community. Here's what local resident Chris had to say. So my, my understanding is the official plan that's been stamped off through the municipality board and you know all those mech machinations of government for the city for the homeless and housing strategy. They did an investigation of, okay, where should everything be located in the city? And Kings Kingstown, this neighborhood, was off the table based on that study because in this immediate neighborhood, number one, it's the 16th poorest neighborhood in Canada based on the 2016 census. We already have the Salvation Army Care Center here and they do warming and um, in the winter. Right here, there's low, uh, low income assisted living, uh, low income housing. We've got the home based housing just on Joseph mm -hmm. Street, two blocks down here. Um, it's too much, right? This isn't a case of not in our backyard. It's a case of our backyard has too much. This has been a neglected file by the city for some time. And just like everything else, it gets exacerbated by the current crisis. Mm -hmm. And and my feeling and my, my gut and my intuition, based on my experiences in life, are telling me that the city is not being fully transparent about this. They're, they're not following their own procedures. There was no public consultation. And have you seen an increase in certain instances of crime or yes. drug abuse? Since the COVID crisis, I've had two, I've had an arson and a theft and another theft. To your property? To my property, yeah. And the arson, they burnt, they burnt my hammock and another, another two seconds of burning and the whole backyard would have been on fire. I would just like to see the transparency, accountability and consultation properly with the, with the, the, the stakeholders, as we call it, that are all involved in this, you know, um, to, to, to move forward and, and figure out a more permanent solution instead of a temporary solution to another temporary solution. So Bell Park temporary solution. So I discovered that many of the individuals living with homelessness find it difficult to comply with the mandatory quarantine orders to stay in the shelters, which are overrun anyway. So they have been temporarily placed at the integrated care hub at Artillery Park, which is a community center that is currently closed to the public due to COVID-19. This care hub has seen a huge increase in visits over the last two weeks. They are averaging approximately 60 to 70 individuals for overnight stays and seeing hundreds of people throughout the day. With such high demand for housing, Kingston Town Council had previously offered amenities to the homeless community at the entrance of a local green space called Bell Park. The concentration in this park made it easier for those dealing with homelessness to access amenities and for outreach programs to provide them. But it turns out, despite an alleged vow from the mayor of Kingston that they would not be forcibly evicted, they were forcibly evicted on Tuesday, September 1st. Here I get Peter's story of what that looked like and what he'd like to see moving forward. Have a listen. But the main problem was it was not supervised, not safe. At 4.30, a whole lot of people will collect there, and they still do to this day that I see. Uh, there was damage being done. There was a lot of drugs being done in the hallway. Um, but there are also some people in, in tremendous need, people with uh, uh, frostbite on the foot with open sores. And they give me uh, sort of a, an ultimatum not to help these people. Yeah, and it was uh, an encampment, uh, I guess about 40 people at one point. 
uh, and we were living as a community and we were helping each other. It was a place where the services could come and help us. Uh, and we were supported by the community. People were bringing food in various groups. Uh, mutual aid, Cataraki was helping us. And uh, people were realizing uh, as they came and talked uh, that the system obviously wasn't working. If this many people had to find alternative uh, place to reside and to, and to live, that the, the system that Kingston had set up was not working. Uh, and, and it has to change. It's simply that you can't one of, one of the problems seemed to be that they continually put people in, in uh, rooms or apartments and don't supervise them. And of course, they end up back in trouble again. And, and that's simply ridiculous. You know, the problem doesn't end when you put someone in, in a, a home. A person doesn't have an automatic psychiatric cure because you put them in a, a room or a residence. Mm -hmm. They need some more support. And again, we looked at the training of the people at home base, and very few of them have crisis training or understand how to deal with some of the psychiatric problems. Uh, so, you know, King Kingston's system is simply not working and it has to change. And so just going back to Bell Park, once, so how did that eviction look or, or how did that feel for you? Well, it was kind of confusing because the mayor had said very clearly there would be no forced eviction. And I took him at his word, and I was out doing various things during the day, and and uh, you know, assuming that things you know we would be told uh, if there was to be an eviction, and we would do it in a, an orderly fashion that there would be places for people to go. And this is what we suggested. And and at that time, I think we were down to about eight or ten people, you know, depending whether they're full time or just coming there for support. And all of a sudden, uh, we were evicted. So I said, either, either the mayor is a liar or he's not in charge of the city. There's a real problem there because if the mayor says no forced eviction and all of a sudden there is, uh, we've got a problem. And if it's allowed to continue, I think two things are going to happen. Uh, over this winter, people will die uh, from the cold and, and from just uh, not enough care. And also, the, you know, the industry of Kingston, which is tourism and come to visit lovely Canada, uh, people are going to turn around and say, no, oh, this is not the way you know if, if this is not what i was advertised you know come to kingston and see a whole lot of people on the street homeless that aren't being cared for mm -hmm. and i don't think that that's what canada is about mm -hmm. i don't think the average citizen thinks that it would be okay if the shoe was on the other foot mm -hmm. and so just on a on a finishing point what's the message that you have for city council the mayor of kingston well these are your citizens <laughs> and other citizens of kingston they're Canadian citizens, and we don't treat people that way. At least, not in the Canada I know. And last time I checked, Kingston was in Canada. Peter, who was on his way to meet with legal aid to discuss human rights violations in his current situation, explains well what could help the homeless community: better access to housing, permit, properly trained staff, and adequate supervision for those most in need. Kingston's town council met on the 15th of September, and their solution was to allocate $60,000 to the owner of a building on Montreal Street for renovations, a location that's across the street from Bell Park. The most interesting part is that under COVID emergency orders, this building is completely exempt from the Building Code Act and can also completely bypass zoning and bylaw regulations under the Planning Act. They clearly state that bypassing these checks and balances are what will ensure the space is ready by October 31st. Then on September 21st, the town of Kingston uh, announced that the permanent housing for the integrated care hub would be placed here. So I reached out to the housing contact to clarify what temporary or permanent meant. And I was also curious to know how the city of Kingston ha was handling the concern that this is a concentration of non-market rate housing in this area. Their response caught me by surprise as I had not been previously aware that this is not an actual housing solution. The housing program administrator responded with the following. The ICH is not deemed permanent housing. It is a drop-in center designed to provide individuals with a safe space to rest, maintain social connection, and receive support, such as referrals, mental health and addictions, uh, basic primary care, and spend the night if needed. The city is indeed committed to ensuring that new builds of an affordable permanent housing needs to be met across the city, so that is indeed accessible to many individuals. While I appreciate that they recognize the need for permanent housing, this seems to be an entirely separate hot potato. 
For now, the Care Hub seems like it will continue to be a band-aid fix for real long-term housing and addiction issues while merely enabling addicts instead of providing them with stable solutions for real recovery and rehabilitation. But aside from that, is the building even suitable? Is it safe? Is it big enough to meet this huge demand? I mean, rushed renovations seem like a recipe for disaster, not to mention it still contributes to the concentration of non-market rate housing, especially because this will be a co-location site where safe consumption is offered to people struggling with addiction. And Peter clearly stated there's a need for stable, long-term housing with adequate supervision, properly trained staff. So this seems like an enabling cushion location while the real hot potato of permanent affordable housing with proper zoning and bylaws remains entirely unaddressed. For Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini. If you want more premium content, please visit rebelnewsplus.com and sign up today to stay in the know with the news every day. That's rebelnewsplus.com.